Today, we're going to be talking about the officers that I regret maxing out. If I could go back in time, these are going to be the officers that I would steer clear of, and I'm going to explain why today. I appreciate you guys coming back for another video. We're going to jump right into it. Welcome back, guys. Starting off our list is going to be Angel of Light. Here's the thing. So the, the new meta or the meta that is slowly becoming more relevant as each day goes by is infantry. Angel of Light is a great infantry officer. The two reasons that I am not keen on Angel of Light for me personally, she's a good officer. Once upon a time, she was actually more or less a pretty desirable officer, especially before Steel Fighter became a thing in the game because she was really good paired with Sergeant Spanner on the Super Heavy for the tanking and the healing abilities. However, now that Steel Fighters came out, Steel Fighter and Sergeant Spanner are kind of the go-to Super Heavy combination, which has kind of pushed Angel of Light off to the side a little bit. She's becoming more popular again with the new infantry meta that's coming into play. However, I don't run infantry, I'm not even close to having an infantry unit, and I'm probably not going to even try to pursue an infantry unit in the near future. Maybe down the road, but not anytime soon. With this being said, the reason I went ahead and awakened Angel of Light was because until the 6.2 update, which if you guys have not watched my video covering this, it might be worth your time to watch it, but once the 6.2 update came out, you were able to unlock universal statues from the daily buy as long as your server was 300 or more days old. Prior to the 6.2 update, the only way you could have universal statues unlocked from your daily buy crate was by having all of the base officers in the game fully awakened and maxed out. Hence, I wanted the universal uh, daily buy statue so I could level up the other officers at a faster rate. So I went ahead and invested my universal statues at that time into Angel of Light and also White Wolf, which had I waited a little bit or had I known prior to the 6.2 update that it was going to change, I would have invested those statues elsewhere. However, hindsight's always 2020. but if I could go back and redo it and I had the knowledge and the in inf information I do now, I would definitely not be worried about doing Angel of Light, at least not as of this moment. That could change in the future, but right now, she would be one of the ones that if I could go back in time and uh, redo, I would not do, I would not invest any universal statues into her to max her out. Coming in at number two on our list here is going to be White Wolf's similar situation to Angel of Light. I went ahead and I invested a little bit in her, not nearly as much as I did with Angel Light because Angel of Light, because you get White Wolf specific statues from doing officer missions every day. So she wasn't as bad in terms of the amount of universal statues that I had to invest in her to fully awaken her. However, same situation, I did it so I could get the universal statues out of the daily buy crates, and then that changed after the 6.2 update. However, something that White Wolf offers that is somewhat appealing, even if you don't run it, don't run infantry, which she's a great officer if you do, and you're kind of on that new meta train for the infantry. But even if you don't, she's actually a decent officer when garrisoned because she does armor damage. She throws anti-armor grenades. So that, if you're on base defense, can be somewhat helpful against like the super heavies or the MBTs that are tanking your base. But again, that's somewhat changing now with the infantry meta too, because more people are tanking with infantry, which if you have an infantry, she is useful. But if you don't, then she's kind of irrelevant because as more and more infantry start to tank, infantry doesn't really have armor per se, right? So those anti-armor grenades that she can lob out that were a benefit against the super heavy and the MBTs are really no longer relevant as well. So especially for me, in my case, White Wolf is kind of a wash. Um, again, thankfully, I didn't have to invest a whole lot of universal statues into her because of her um, stat specific statues each day from the officer missions. But she would be number two on my list. Coming in at number three on the list is going to be White Wolf. This one may or may not be controversial, but the reason White Wolf is on this list for me is because 
you got him through competing in the Moscow Theater of Conquest event. From the very first Moscow Theater, Theater of Conquest event you compete on, um, you are going to have the opportunity to unlock Winter Huntsman. You also get Winter Huntsman specific statues as rewards through that event as well. The thing is, and the reason that I say I would, if I could go back in time, I would not do Winter Huntsman is because Winter Huntsman, now that there's so many new officers once upon a time when I first competed in Moscow, which was a lot, lot longer ago um, than most of you guys. But at that time, there really wasn't a whole lot of new officers in the game. They were really slow to add officers into the game outside of just the baseline officers. So Winter Huntsman was new, was exciting, offered some skill sets at that time that really were not seen in the game. However, his damage coefficient is pretty average now. At one time, it was higher than most of the other officers. It's 1350. Um, however, that's been far outmatched now with a lot of the new officers. They average generally about 1500 in terms of damage coefficient with their tactical skill. So his damage coefficient is somewhere around middle of the road now. It's not at the top of the pack like it once was. And it's also not got a such a unique skill set anymore that it is just a must-have officer. If I could go back and reset winter huntsman i would do it in a heartbeat and i would throw the statues on like a valkyrie or a fl uh, argent flame something like that something that's going to be a little bit more relevant to the current state of the game and something that i would also an officer i think would be more kind of versatile long term as the meta changes of course down the road winter huntsman again was a unique officer at the time offered some skill sets and some damage coefficient that we hadn't really seen at that time but times have changed quite a bit um, since Winter Huntsman became, Winter Huntsman is, is over a year old now, and it's just not, there's really, he's not a bad officer to have, but he's just not a must have or a game changer. It's kind of hard at this point with all of these other officers available now to really find a good place or a, like a definitive unit that he works best on. He's a decent officer, but not a game changer and not something that's going to really make or break any army composition. The next officer on my list here is going to be Wings of Glory. Wings of Glory is not a bad officer by any means, so please don't mistake what I'm saying here. But the reason that I would, would, if I could go back in time, I would not invest in Wings of Glory and I would save the statues or potentially invest them into another officer is simply that when I was awakening Wings of Glory, there was no indication of modern units. None of us had any idea what was coming in the future, which is part of the game, right? We've kind of all got this same dynamic going on right now however at that time i had two fighters and a bomber so i needed him as another fighter officer to be able to run a dual fighter setup which was my goal but then once modern units came out and there was more um, investing that had to be done into a single unit it basically is impossible unless you're a, an ultra mega whale to have more than really one beefed up air force unit so what i personally do is i've got i still have my two fighters and then i've got my one bomber however i can only max out i shouldn't even say max because it's not even close to max but i can only push one single air force unit at a time up to any kind of significant level and so what that means is a lot of the air force officers that i've got fully maxed out are somewhat irrelevant so i switch what i do is i switch between my fighter and my Martyr's Bomber, depending on the situation and how I'm needing to play to benefit the Alliance. So, for example, if I'm running my Fighter, which Wings of Glory is a fighter officer, the officer combination I run is Polar Phantom and Pol um, Polar Phantom and Witcher. So there's really not a place for Wings of Glory when I run my fighter officer combination. And then when I switch to my Bomber, obviously Wings of Glory is totally out of the conversation because he's not a Bomber-specific officer. And he doesn't offer any kind of passive skill that would make me want to run him on a bomber either. So Wings of Glory is another one that is a good officer overall. But once that modern units kind of system came into place, he became largely irrelevant for me personally. Now, not saying that over time when Air Force units are able to be when people are able to make multiple Air Force units again, like the average player like myself, that he won't become relevant again because he very well may. But at the current stage of the game, I would like to have those statues to put into other officers that could help me quite a bit more. Last but not least on our list here is going to be Heaven's Savior. So, 
Similar to the Wings of Glory conversation, the reason that I regret Heaven Savior is going back to my two officer combination, or I'm sorry, my two fighter combo for my Air Force units. What I was doing prior to the 5.0 update with modern units is I was running a two fighter combo and I would use one as kind of my tanking fighter. I was a martyr's fighter. It had the highest level of maneuverability and I would put Heaven Savior on there because it had base damage reduction to aircraft or base fire, AA firepower reduction of um, aircraft. So it had some awesome, some, some perks that really were kind of beneficial for the role that I was trying to get it to play. Um, again, the, the reduction, because a lot of like dog fights with, between fighters take place near or directly over bases. So I wanted that reduction in damage from the base AA gun, and then I could follow it up with my Vanguard fighter. And that way I could have kind of a one, two punch. I could let my martyrs fighter with heaven savior fly in, be the sponge, so to speak, and then follow it up with my Vanguard, which would come in and just wipe the sky clean of these other enemy fighters. However, again, kind of going back to, again, the similar conversation with Wings of Glory with the 5.0 update and the introduction of modern units, I can really only focus on one single Air Force unit at a time, at least as of the present moment. So I don't really have a place because I can't use him to tank because if I send him out on a fighter to tank and I've got all of my components and prototype pieces and what have you on my bomber, the fighter's just going to get chewed to pieces and I'm kind of aimlessly losing reserves at that point. So I really don't have the, the luxury at this moment to be able to run a multiple fighter combo and use one of them as a sponge or heck, even run a bomber and use it as a sponge. The Air Force units are just getting too strong that you kind of, to be able to compete, have to have a single strong Air Force unit yourself. So the whole idea of the sponge unit for Air Force is kind of, not really super relative at this moment in time. Again, I think as, as time goes on, that will kind of levelize and get a little bit back to the old school approach. But Air Force is so hard to level up on the modern units that it's going to be a long time before I see that really kind of taking place. But with that being said, guys, these are the five officers that I would love to be able to reset if I could go back and do it. Um, and be able to invest them in these new officers that are more relevant and more helpful than the officers that I had invested in back at that time. With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Fun little video I came up with. I thought it would be neat to kind of give you guys a little insight into to my officers and my view on what, my, what officers I've gotten awakened and things like that. Let me know what officers you guys would be... Would, would, prefer to reset or to not invest in if you could go back in time and redo it. Let me know in the comments below, guys. I appreciate you if you stuck around this long. If you guys are not in our Discord, our community Discord, the link to that is going to be below in the description. If you guys enjoyed the video, please consider hitting the like button and the subscribe button as both of those help myself and the channel out tremendously. And with that being said, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.